We have now felled forest enough everywhere. Let us restore this one element of material life to its normal proportions and devise means for maintaining the permanence of its relations to the fields, the meadows, and the pastures, to the rain and dews of heaven, to the springs and rivers with which it waters the earth. Frederick was led to consider forestry by reading the writings of George Perkins Marsh regarding climatic changes induced by the devastation of the forests. He found out what trees were best adapted to the climate and then set them out by the hundreds or thousands. His example has caused many farmers to plant trees on the barren hillsides and has therefore proved very valuable. rest on the achievements of the past. Rather, each generation must not only be stewards, but activists, innovators, and enrichers. As this exciting new unit of the National Park System goes into being, we look forward to the day when the message and vision of conservation stewardship and its importance for the future will once again go out across the nation from the hills of Vermont. It is about respect for the land. It is about, it is about this relationship that, that we as humans have with the land. It's about our relationship with the forest. And these trees here, these were planted by the park. And those big, huge Norway spruce trees we saw too, guess who planted those? Frederick and Julia Billings. And 130 years ago, they are some of the families that first planted those big Norway spruce trees. And so, if you come back in 10 years, if you come back when you're as old as me, those trees are going to get taller than you and taller than these other trees here. And if you come back when you're 130 years old, you would be the most famous person to come to this park. But you actually can care for forests. You actually can take something out of them. And that the forest can continue to grow it again, supply it again, without us being a destructive part of that cycle. That's, that's a key message that's here. The Vermont Council on the Future, which I was involved with, had meetings all around the state and ended up speaking with thousands of people. And two of the themes that continuously came up were the importance of community to Vermonters and the importance of a working landscape, which ties in completely with how the park operates here in Woodstock. The working landscape is just another way of thinking about land that's, that's beautiful, but at the same time productive. And the importance of community is how the park operates here in town. All the cooperative things they do with, with the town and village governments and with private organizations here in the, in the community. Basically, if you wanted to get there, you just go right here and you see the brick building, you take a left onto Elm Street. At Marsh Billings, you hear about our host community. The park doesn't set boundaries as to where the park begins and ends, where the visitor's experience should begin and end. It's woven into the fabric of the town of Woodstock and the uh, region. I think we're go on trek to taste. I would just love to follow up on a piece Bo raised, which is uh, in terms of trails. Woodstock Trails Partnership has partnered on, on everything from Walk Woodstock, Trek to Taste, Road to the Pogue, and our Wood Festival. Trek to Taste is an event organized and sponsored by the Woodstock Trails Partnership. This program connects two of the great assets of our communities. One is our capacity to grow some of our own food. And the other is our incredible network of footpaths and trails. 
it's a great way to partner with local farms, local cheese makers, local pizza makers. Our objective is to make this a walking destination for the world. We have 30 miles of trails available to visitors and to the community from the Woodstock Green. It's a model of how to work with a community and how to be a good neighbor. One of our new projects is creating a link to the Appalachian Trail, which isn't very far away. Just enjoy the AT, enjoy the park, but see some of the valley and experience this, you know, visually what, what we're trying to connect here. I get that when I go on the gully. The Conservation Study Institute was established by the oh, National yeah. Park Service right. in order to take advantage of the parks that are out there being very innovative. For the Conservation Study Institute to be based at a park makes a lot of sense, and particularly this park, because Marsh Billings Rockefeller National Historical Park is one of those innovative parks across the system that's really pushing itself, testing out a lot of ideas, and we're able to share that then with other parks. So today um, I'm here to talk to you a little bit about citizen science opportunities for every classroom and to talk about maybe why... The Force for Every Classroom program was perhaps the most important professional development I've ever participated in. There it is. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Now. With the Force for Every Classroom, we were very fortunate to have a set of partners who had really deep experience with educational programs. At the heart of, of a forest for every classroom is this belief that students will become more um, active stewards, making authentic contributions to their community. And so there's often, and it varies from community to community, some type of project-based learning that the students can apply what they've been learning and become stewards of public lands. For students, the connection with the outdoor world allows them to not just study community, not just study the natural world, but to be a part of it. Those connections are more direct, more meaningful to the kids, and to, to me. Last year, the unit that I wrote focused on land use on this property and how it has changed over time so that my students could consider the history, not only of this mountain, but the future of this place. The land tells a story. My students want to be part of that story. They will be able to take many of these ideas of uh, caring and concern for the environment and um, for the community, uh, the larger community, with them wherever they go. They have partnered beautifully with the school to develop a sense of place with history and geology and geography and understanding the history of conservation, understanding the history of how this land has been used and, and the importance of conserving the land. Through the National Park and Forest for Every Classroom, we initiated the Mountains and Rivers Outdoor Camp to create a variety of experiences that would uh, highlight what uh, sustainability is uh, and what stewardship is, land stewardship, and have fun doing it.
it's what the kids do that does the most teaching, not what we say about those concepts. Uh, it's, it's around 24 and, and a half, I guess. Yeah, that's probably about far enough, right? Yeah. 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 Then do you remember how to do this? Turn it back again or something. No, you put it in and then I... The first rework we did was a good way for us to see not only how choices were made, but also how they affected the environment. Oh, it didn't okay. break. Okay, excellent. Beautiful core. Okay, let's take a look at the number of rings and how they're spaced. If you do logging responsibly, then you're basically thinning the forest so that a new generation of trees can grow. A forester is interested in two things. We're trying to manage both for the health of the ecosystem and for products, things like boards and paper and firewood. The park has embraced a value, a core value of Vermont, which is sustainability. They've chosen to, with its forest plan, harvest sustainably. They, are, uh, they have built a sustainable green forest center. They uh, are helping all around be a model for sustainability. This is a, a relatively new building, and it's one of the greener buildings in the National Park Service right now. There's only actually three that are platinum LEED certified. That's the highest level that you can get. It means leadership and energy and environmental design. The Forest Center is an ode to the forest in that it includes a lot of different tree species that grow here and really grow throughout Vermont and the Northeast. It's a nice way to engage people in a conversation about where wood comes from and uh, ways to build a building with uh, a reduced environmental impact. So there's some very new technologies here, obviously with the solar panels on the roof, but there's also some very old technologies. The long end of your building is facing south, you're going to utilize as much natural light and heat as you can. You know, local wood not only used to build the building, but also heats the building. So the wood was taken from this forest? Yes, the paneling in there is black cherry, it's white pine, there's oak, a variety of different woods, um, and the Norway spruce, uh, which you see around us here, part of some of the earliest plantations put in from this, you know, oldest continuously managed forest in the United States. Nice this stand had a really bad uh, white pine weevil problem when it was originally planted. And so the thinnings have removed a lot of the worst quality trees. Now we're getting to trees that are fairly straight and they're up above the height where the weevil can get to them. One more thinning should really clean out a lot of those weevil trees. Yeah, in 50 years it's going to be beautiful in there. That's what you promised anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, because I know I'll be gone. <laughs> Actually, 50. My grandfather's 94. I guess I've got a chance to be here in 50 years. <laughs> this is the first place in North America where the practice of forestry was put into place, and the forest has been continuously managed the whole time by a succession of professional foresters. It's a place that can tell the story from the beginning of forestry in North America right up to the present time with an eye towards the future. After coming here to this park and you know learning about stewardship, about you know taking care of the environment, taking care of the land, um, I'm just thinking about back home. We have like this woodlands over uh, nearby, and I never really thought about you know what I could do to make sure that it is in good condition, that there aren't invasive species swarming over the local ecosystem. I'm gonna just do my best to take care of my land in whatever ways I can, because even a little bit helps. We are here to change lives in a way that permits them to make connections, to see the patterns of nature, to see how they interact with the environment in a way which is not abstract. If you're gonna care about 
your land, then you need to know the land itself. Having the passion that we can develop in classrooms today is a step in this idea of taking on an active role to be stewards of, um, of our environment and that they will have that fire, that drive, that desire here at home as well as understanding that it's important in a much broader and more global sense. Stewardship is knowing enough to care and caring enough to learn. Stewardship is looking at something that you have influence over and deciding to use your influence to help. To me, forest stewardship is treating the forest as if the future mattered. The National Park, I think, is one of the best gifts. It is what helps to define our lives here. Knowing that it's protected land for all people is important, I think, for our children and for others who come to visit here. It's a gift. <laughs>